welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Today I thought we could do a chill, get ready with me. And this is also gonna be a bit of a life update. I thought I would let you guys know how I'm doing after my surgery and all that. Um, and I wanted to recreate a look I actually did last night. It's not gonna be super focused on the makeup. I'll have it down below, but I used my custom made Natasha Denona palette last night. I went out to dinner and a play and stuff. And so I thought I would actually recreate that look tonight. Uh, because I thought it was really pretty. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I've prepped my skin for the most part, but I'm gonna be going in with my First Aid Beauty Primer. This is that coconut smoothie one, and I freaking love it so much. It is so good. I'm so glad to have it back. It's uh, It's so weird because it's moisturizing, but I don't find that this makes me any more like oily or anything, but I get that like drink of moisture that I want so badly. So I just love this. This is like my long-term fate for a while and I used it all the way up and I was trying to get through other things, but man, this thing is just like, it's worth being in my collection. So I wanted to update you guys about how I'm doing after my surgery. If you guys don't know, I got surgery um, like unexpectedly a little over a month ago now. I have a whole video talking about that, so I'll leave that down below if you wanna get caught up that way. I'll try to keep it brief here. But basically, I, uh, yeah, had to get my gallbladder removed in a more emergency fashion. I went to the hospital because I had really bad uh, pain in my abdomen, like my upper stomach, and so, um, yeah, that lasted probably seven-ish hours before it finally went away, and so then the next morning, once they did MRIs and all this stuff, um, we knew it was the gallbladder and so they removed it. And uh, they've gotten it to a place where there are, there can be less complications, although, you know, I think it's looked at as like a super chill surgery and it's still surgery. <laughs> let's, just get, let's get that clear. Still surgery, but with me, I actually um, had to stay in the hospital quite a while afterward. Like, I think I was there five, four full nights or five full nights maybe. I can't quite remember honestly, which I'm glad. <laughs> Let me get that clear because it was kind of a lot um, mentally to be there. But um, basically I had to stay longer because my liver going into surgery was fine. Everything, numbers were good, all of that. But unfortunately um, the numbers once I got out of surgery were actually um, like elevated quite a bit. Like I think it's supposed to be a number between like 30 and 50 and it was in the 500s, you know, like <laughs> that's not good. Um, and so uh, I was there quite a few days for them to kind of make sure that number was going down and it really wasn't. So there was a really big possibility that I was gonna have to have a second surgery because they were worried that there was something that had gone through the duct and gone into my liver and whatnot. Basically on the Monday I got released, my numbers came back and they were still very high, like in the high twos, but they had dropped enough that we could at least see there was something, you know, downward <laughs> happening. Um, so I basically was at this like halfway point is how they described it, like, I could do the surgery or I could go home and kind of wait it out and see and do blood work in a couple of weeks and then go from there. And if I had to get the surgery still, then we'd get that done. And hopefully basically I wouldn't have any pain or anything. And um, I opted for that one because it was 50-50. And you know, <laughs> them talking to you about the risks, it's like, you know, I wanted so badly to get out of the hospital, but you also wanna make sure that by going home, like that's also the best decision and not gonna be something that ends up ruining you <laughs> or being a bad thing, you know? I had the same potential complications either way. Like if I did the surgery, there could be the potential that I didn't even need it, but um, there's also a high chance of pancreatitis. There could be some bleeding, so they might have to like carterize stuff. Like there's some complications there. Um, and obviously to have to like go back under. Luckily they'd go through my mouth, I believe, so there wouldn't be any more incisions, but you know, I <laughs> wasn't, really wanting to do that after just doing it. So um, that was that. But then the complications basically, if I had to get the surgery still after doing the blood work after a couple of weeks, the complications were basically pancreatitis um, and still needing to get the surgery. But obviously, if everything kind of took care of itself as it was kind of showing, then um, I wouldn't have to get the surgery. And obviously it'd be great to not just do a surgery for no reason if we, you know, could give my body the time to do it. So saying all that, um, I decided to do that instead and just get out of the hospital, not do the surgery and hope that my body could take care of it and just be on top of my blood work and really on top of anything in case 
my state changed. So that all being said, it's been a while. I mean, like I said, I've, um, I wanted to update you guys because I, I still get comments being like, I hope you're doing okay. And I'm doing so much better. I am happy to say that my blood work came back my liver is doing amazing. It's back to normal. Um, so I do not need a second surgery. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful to be like closing the chapter on my gallbladder in some ways. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just very grateful that I don't have to be like prepping for another surgery or anything, you know, mentally, physically, all those things. So I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that my body was able to like take care of that. Um, they assume that it might be like some dust or something from maybe a stone um, that my liver was still trying to like take care of or something, but not an actual stone had passed. So um, I was hopeful that would be the case also because I did go in for a second MRI before surgery and they, they didn't really find anything blocking any of my ducts, which you would normally see with the raised liver numbers. So it was just, you know, a scary situation. I felt like, again, I <laughs> woke up on a Thursday, it was St. Patrick's Day. I woke up on St. Patrick's Day and was like excited to literally film my Natasha Denona pastel video and uh, instead was at the hospital and didn't leave the hospital for like almost a week and had uh, my gallbladder removed in the process. Like <laughs> that's how that situation went down and it was not exactly what I was expecting. So great news, no surgery. Um, I think the last time I had talked to you about this, like in that get ready with me, by the way, I'm using this corrector I used for my foundation, this one. I mean, the ends is just still my favorite guys. I like the Kosas, but I like the Ensa still. <laughs> I really do. Anyway, the last time I talked to you, I had my, what I called my blood bag in still. So I told the doctor that when I went in to get it removed, I was like, we call it the blood bag. And he was like, that's gross. I was like, wow. I didn't think I'd gross you out by that term, but I guess I did. They did essentially just rip it out. I mean, it was like a drainage bag, just so you guys know, <laughs> if you don't understand what blood bag means. But um, it was a drainage bag that I went home with and I had to have that in for a week after I got home from the hospital. And that was like so annoying to have because it really, um, you know, it was hard to just like get back to normal. And also, you know, I knew I wasn't starting the healing process on that cut and in incision because there's literally like a live tube coming out of it. So that first week I had that in, but then after that I got it removed and the process was really quick and it's, Odd, it was oddly like painless, but also one of the weirdest feelings ever. He really did just rip it out, but he did one of those kind of like tricky situations where he's just talking to me and like, oh, how does this feel? How does that feel? And then by the time I was like laying back and I felt like my stomach was like cramping, like my side was cramping. Um, and it almost feels like he's twisting and pulling all your guts out, but not in a way that hurts. It's just like, a very odd sensation. And by the time I realized what he was doing, it was done, thank goodness. But yeah, it was quick and easy to have it removed, just very strange. And the tube in me was so long. I was not expecting how long it was, but it was pretty, pretty long. And so once that got taken out, I mean, I didn't get any stitches or anything and it was a decent, I felt like a pretty decent hole in the middle of my stomach. Um, it <laughs> It's pretty big. So that took almost, I felt like, a week after getting that removed to even be closed up. Like, it was a little juicy, you know? Um, but luckily, at this point, completely closed up. I can lay on my stomach like I am for all purposes good. So I just wanted to update you on that so you guys knew, cause I, I mean, I just appreciate so many of the kind comments. I had a lot of you guys just being like, I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're healing well. Like, I hope you're doing well in recovery. A lot of you guys were like, I can tell you're like feeling better. Cause I have really been enjoying makeup, which I'll touch on a little bit. I think in this video as well, I need to stop talking so much cause I'm <laughs> only on cream bronzer at this point, but I will say, and we're gonna get a little TMI here, so welcome to my bowels, really. <laughs> um, one of the things that has been different and has not really gone back to normal, I'll say, um, is my kind of bathroom situation. I guess we'll call it that, pooping. That's what it is, okay? My pooping situation is different. <laughs> It's different, okay? I mean, I hope this isn't too much for you, but it's like, we all fucking poop, okay? Like, and if you aren't, that's a severe medical situation we need to get checked out. 
right away, right away, okay? So um, anyway, I, since surgery, have definitely seen and noticed that I have a lot more, um, more, I need immediate use of the bathroom. And, you know, they sent me home basically being like, there's not that much of a difference in what you can and can't eat. It's mostly that you should not eat too much fatty foods. Like that can cause your stomach to be upset or spicy foods. So I've been trying to like avoid those or just, or just be aware of when I'm eating those. But I, I mean, it's gotten to the point where I'm like, I have a poop tracker guys. <laughs> I'm doing hot girl shit over here with my poop tracker, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Um, or what foods kind of trigger what's going on with me. And I mean, I'm lucky that in a lot of ways, even though it can be kind of annoying or sometimes painful, I mean, if I'm like cramping or whatever, um, you know, it, it doesn't overall, it could be worse, right? Like it could be something that's way more life altering and changing, but it's definitely real. Like that's for sure. So I'm hoping that like, as my body adjusts in six months or so, um, that'll go back to normal or, you know, get to a more normal state. Um, and this isn't my new normal. Like that's what I really do hope. And um, I know though, <laughs> that for some of you who have had your gallbladder removed, you've told me like that's the situation, that's the new situation for you. And so there's a part of me that thinks potentially that will be my new situation, but um, we'll, we'll see. I'm just trying to like track it really and just see if there's something that I can eliminate from my diet or at least be aware and know like, okay, if I do this, this potentially will be the, the situation from it or whatnot, because right now it's just hard to tell. It's like, yeah, it's a lot. I'm not gonna go into more details about it, but that's like the only thing that's different. And I am grateful for that, like of all things, because it could be worse, but I will say, you know, they try to act like the gallbladder doesn't do anything. And obviously it does, <laughs> obviously it's little muscles, you know, squeezing out a little bile when you need it, a little digestive stuff to help you. <laughs> um, it does do something, I will say, but you know, they do say also that by the time you have like stones potentially, or um, you're having like basically gallbladder attacks, your gallbladder is pretty much fucked anyway. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. All I know is that I'm in the situation I'm in now and it could be worse. And I'm just hoping to have that be remedied better because even when I told the doctor more when I did my blood work, so a couple of weeks ago about it, he was like, well, just see if it, you know, kind of goes back after a little bit. But he also was like, he made it seem like what I would do to help it would be like taking pills a lot, like three times a day or something. And he basically was like, you would have to do a cost benefit analysis of if you would want to do medication or just deal with whatever's happening. So I don't even know. Anyway, that's the one thing that's different. And if you're wondering, oh, I'm not using this. I'm using this for the mirror. I have been using, I did that shop my stash. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it linked down below. But I put the Tower 28 blush in and I feel like I got this when I got a couple other cream blushes. And so I was testing it, but man, I have been using this um, under blushes as its own blush and really enjoying it. I like it with a sponge. I like it with, this brush or a brush. I like it with my fingers. Like, I don't, I'm very into it. I'm very happy to like have rediscovered it. I really like the packaging as well. I think I prefer this type of packaging than I do uh, a liquid or cream type of thing, like in a tube, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's just really, really pretty super natural as in not of this world. No, but actually just looks like it's not there. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm using this for my highlighter. So pretty. And I take this brush from Sigma. I've been using this also for the Skin Perfector. I don't know, F67. I'm not trying to dampen down too much of the shine that's just kind of naturally happening. And I don't even know how much I'm gonna, honestly, I might powder a little bit a little bit later, but I don't think I'm going to right now. I like the kind of dewy look that I have going on, but I wanna do my eyebrows. Okay, I saw this on Instagram, or I don't know where I saw this, but I was like, soap brows, but it's tinted. And I've never been someone who can freaking do soap brows because I have blonde hair, so like, sure, brush them up, baby, but you're not gonna see them, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so I was like, maybe tinted brow soap is the way to go. This is, I don't even know what brand this is. WB Co, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just was like, you know what, F it, I'm gonna go for it. Maybe this is my moment for soap brows. So I bought like the little spray. I'm sure you can just use whatever spray, but 
I went there with it. Then this is the tint. The one thing I will say is I wish that this wasn't quite as warm as it is, uh, but it is kind of warm, but I get it on the spoolie. I kind of like do this in the cap just to kind of, I don't know, not have too much goddamn product on. And then you guys, I'm gonna do this brow right here. I've been liking, I'm scared that I'm gonna try to do it right now and it's gonna look bad, but we'll see. No, it looks good. So it kind of just tints my brow hairs actually and gives me that feathery look. I'm like, what the hell? This is really great for like every day. I still will go in with my brow brush or brow pencil, but I'm kind of like super digging it. Like it's so easy and so natural. I'm sure I could just get this look if I just actually tinted my brows. Like that could be a really big possibility. And I do not pluck my brows. So if they look kind of like big or bushy or something like, yeah, <laughs> they are. And I maybe will pluck a little bit more so my tail can be a little less big maybe. But I also don't mind it. Like I kind of like how just natural it looks and how it just shows off the hair I have. See, that one was a little bit darker on that side. But let me know if you know of another tinted brow uh, soap because this is definitely, it definitely seems like the way that I'm gonna have to go if I wanna do soap brows. And I know that everyone kind of like laminates them down. I don't really do that part. I don't mind it looking like a little unruly, I guess, or so. But man, I really have been enjoying it. The last thing I'll kind of do is I'll take my brow pencil and I'll just fill in the tail a little, just a bit to get a little more shape if I want. I feel like especially on this side, but not a lot. And I think the thing I really like about it is I'm not really drawing on my skin as much. So I feel like it looks more natural. Although I feel like this side, you can like tell the product in my brow hairs, but whatever. Okay, that was like a bit of a brow break. I'm sorry, <laughs> um, but I did, I was excited to show you cause it's the first time using that on camera. And I don't know, I feel like it might be my new favorite thing. And I might've found a replacement for all the brow gels. And my gosh, if this is actually gonna be my new thing, I used to have to buy those like CoverGirl brow gels so often cause I, you know, run out. This is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, see me in five years, I'm still gonna have it. I'm still gonna have it. And so easy, so, so easy. Okay, anyway, I think that's everything when it comes to the medical update. I really just wanted to let you guys know because so many of you guys are so sweet. And, um, you know, I thought I would just let you know that, yay, no surgery, like no surgery, you guys. I thought I would also mention in here though, uh, kind of the second half of the life update is kind of how I feel like my surgery has affected a bit of how I'm thinking about a lot of stuff because I don't know, it was scary, okay? It was a scary situation for me. Um, I don't know how much I should have been scared or not, but I'm just telling you that was the situation, okay? And so having to only think about medical stuff when I didn't have to do that before was not fun, but also a bit eye-opening to, you know, really realizing what do I like? What do I love? What do I, I don't know. It kind of just makes you focus, I guess, in general on bigger picture questions. And, you know, I just realized because I hadn't been able to do makeup and I actually didn't have the time or space to even really think about makeup or perfume or any of the things that I love and do and I feel like are such a big part of me. Um, it made me really realize like, I fucking love this shit so much. I feel so grateful that I'm able to do this as a job. Like what the fuck, that's crazy. And so uh, yeah, that kind of put that in a new perspective. And I mean, I think to get pretty personal that I have been dealing a lot with this idea of makeup and having guilt over buying or not buying and kind of the transition my channel and my life has taken over the years. Starting out, I was trying to spend less on makeup because of my situation. I just didn't have the money to spend on makeup even though I wanted to. And so that was kind of a big part of my channel and I still definitely love the idea of trying to shop your stash and really only buying the things that you love. But in that time, I mean, this has 
become my job and at the end of the day I've always been like into makeup because I love product and I love makeup so you know trying to find the balance has been tough but I'm definitely trying to work through some of like that I guess guilt or whatnot and recognizing the change of where I'm at in my life now is not where I was at seven years ago so that's kind of something and feeling like happy in what I do and using product and honestly that also translate into just using my makeup more and not only when I'm doing camera stuff I think with the pandemic and all that like I was going out less and I feel like I was using makeup more for um YouTube and you know when I was on camera than I was just in my life and I'm definitely changing that a lot like I like doing my makeup <laughs> every day um, and I want to do my makeup every day whether I'm filming or not whether I'm going out you know or not um, and just liking the makeup for the makeup and that's been so nice and I think that's also helped with my whole mindset about decluttering and kind of again using my products I realized that I feel or felt or do feel sometimes, I don't know. Um, sometimes I can feel anxiety about the makeup I feel like is not getting use in my collection. Like that's a big thing for me. Like I feel like, oh no, it's not getting used. And so what I'll usually do in that case is I will then, you know, wanna go through my stuff and pare it down so I only have things I'm using. But lately, that's not really been helpful for me because I have been changing my taste so much. I have been enjoying more neutral makeup. I've been enjoying doing my makeup in a more neutral way and really just in a different way than I had in the past. And so um, I'm realizing, well, it's not like, some of the things that I got rid of only a year ago or so are things that I want now, <laughs> like single potted eyeshadows. I used to hate that, now I love it. Liking matte blushes or glowy blushes, sometimes I like one or the other. And so I just feel like less inclined at the moment to wanna to declutter stuff because it's not my taste at the moment because it might be in six months or it might be, you know, on an off random day that I wanna like play around with it. And maybe by using it, I'll really enjoy it and then that'll be my new thing or whatever. So um, anyway, I have storage, right? And it's not burdening me in any other way. Really, I feel like I'm just like feeling guilty about having it and I guess anxious about that or something. And so I've realized though, I've realized that the action of getting rid of it is what kind of soothes me, makes me feel better, whatever. And so I realized that I could also take another action besides decluttering and that action is using it. <laughs> so um, that's been interesting. And I, I don't know, I just kind of wonder if you're obviously trying to be more minimal, like I'm not a minimalist. Ever. I'm not I like collecting stuff I like having stuff that's not my thing and not in all areas mostly in the areas you see what my channel is about <laughs> those are like the only areas but I do I, I like having a lot of stuff I don't mind it I actually enjoy it um, but if you're trying to be minimalist maybe this isn't for you but if you're feeling those feelings I I don't know just maybe try instead of thinking oh I never use this I feel bad about that I should get rid of it and maybe you should maybe after using it you realize yeah that formula doesn't work for me or I don't I don't really like that color on me, you know, or something like that. Maybe you realize that, but instead of getting rid of it to kind of make you feel better, try using it because yeah, if you, I realize like my guilt is coming from, oh, it never gets used. It's just sitting there like, oh, and it's like, but if I use it, then it's not just sitting there. Then I'm using it. Then I'm, I'm getting the use out of it. Anyway, that's just something I've really come to realize and has definitely kind of changed some of my mindset. So by using my makeup more also, I can actually use so much more stuff. Like, oh wow, imagine that. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like every day's a new day. And I've kind of set up my palette project that I'm kind of doing this year where I'm just tracking what I use. And it's um, it's been fun because it actually encourages me and rewards me anytime I use any of my makeup and my palettes. And that's how I've been thinking of my makeup, like kind of romanticizing me getting ready and the fun that I have doing it has been great. Like so, so good, I've been loving it. Anyway, I've just been in such a great place and I feel like there's things of course that I'm like bored of. I don't like want to buy all the new releases, but I've also had a lot of fun with the few things that I have bought. I found some new favorites, which has just been so exciting. And I think I'm just trying to, again, strike that balance for me that works. Like 
considering all of my things, like how much money I budget to make up, the channel portion of me, the makeup lover portion of me, and also me who wants to get used out of stuff that I still do already have, like all of that coming together, I feel like I'm in a pretty good place and I'm trying to like find that balance and it's actually been fun and enjoyable. <laughs> because I've been trying to like strip the guilt away and just like have a good time with it because at the end of the day it's like I fucking love this stuff why is it making me sad like I don't want it to make me sad I don't I'm done with that I'm done with that <laughs> it's done it's done okay okay this is the part of my makeup look that I really loved the last time that I did this I took this shade these are both from the gold palette um I don't know what it's called off the top of my head but I took this and I just tapped it right here in that upper portion oh so pretty it's like kind of unexpected and like I don't know like look at the difference but it's still very neutral so I just kind of tap it up there it's like not on the lid exactly it's like higher than that and maybe I like that space because I do have hooded eyes but I really love that and then I take this other one again I think one's like lime chrome and one is something else I don't know and then this one's more flaky and I kind of just tap that on top of that the base I already kind of worked in there. And this adds like another layer of like shine and texture. I just loved it. I thought it was so pretty and still very neutral. Naturally, I'm using the liner I love so much. The last thing I wanna talk about though, I do wanna talk about codes just for a second because I wanted to kind of update the fact that I have been taking affiliated codes probably for the last almost a year at this point. It's been a little bit. And for a long time, I didn't do that. If I had a code with a brand, I would like specifically ask for it not to be affiliated. Um, or I like a lot of the times wouldn't even do that. In my ideal world, <laughs> I, I wish that codes didn't necessarily have to be a thing that you had to do to work with brands, but I feel like it's this stepping stone part of a relationship with a brand um, that I didn't realize before. And then once I realized that I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll take codes with brands that I feel like I would want potential different opportunities with. And so I just think if you're gonna be doing social media stuff, um, I do suggest that you take codes. And again, not with everyone, be picky. And you know, I think you should still try to keep your content as authentic and real and true to yourself as possible. And by picking brands that you actually really just naturally enjoy and use, that will be easier to do, obviously. But brands really do use those as metrics uh, to see who they maybe wanna work with, whether that's sponsored content, whether that's like bigger collaborations down the line. And I do feel like <laughs> you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot if you want those opportunities. Um, by not doing the codes, it's like the first step, you know, to kind of see how that relationship goes. And as much as I might not love that, and in my ideal world, I wish that uh, brands could just be like, we like your vibe and, you know, I, I don't know, but that's like the actual data point that brands have. So I just wanted to update you with that, that I do do <laughs> that now. And that's kind of what it is like. <laughs> It just is what it is. Also, you know, there is this thing, I feel like a lot of the thoughts on it have changed over the years. Like people kind of know way more about people doing social media or being more of like an influencer now. And so there's almost this expectation too. And, and honestly, if you choose not to have a code and all these other people do, you know, it codes not only give you an affiliate uh, commission and also, you know, help the brand, but they are discounts that you know, people can use. And I know that I will go, when I wanna go find a deal, cause I love a deal, I will go find a code to use so I can save a little bit of money if there's not like a sale going on or whatever. And so if you are genuinely using products from brands that you love and you have the opportunity to have a code with them, but you choose not to, they're gonna go seek out someone else's code. And in some ways you're shooting yourself in your foot there too, because how many people are going and buying that stuff under someone else's code? And if brands are using that as the main data point. It's tough. Do you get what I'm saying? I don't know. It's just something that it took a, <laughs> it was a hard pill for me to swallow. I didn't want to, I don't want to believe it, but that's the truth. Yeah, it's kind of the update, <laughs> the update on codes for you guys. And I think what changed it, I mean, I like literally got that like hard truth information from a brand and I was like, oh, it's really, it's really like that. <laughs> okay. I don't know what 
my business brain. Like, I don't have a business brain, obviously, I don't know. Okay, let me zoom you in on this look because I think it's done. I think the eye look is done. So those are the brows of close. This is the one I felt like you could see the product, but that's that one. A little warm, again, I'd love it just a little more cool toned, but I really love the eye look. I think it's so sexy, but simple, easy. I mean, I did this way faster than talking to you guys. It's taking me a while sitting here. I think for lips, I'm just gonna put this gloss on. I didn't use this last night. I used, um, I think the Tarte Maracuja Lip in Peachy Beige or something. But the NYX Butter Gloss in Butterscotch is what we're using today. And I like to tap it in with my fingers sometimes. It's like, makes everything kind of mesh better. But this is the final look. Let me zoom you more out. And I think it is so pretty. I did powder a little bit because I was just getting a little bit dewy, but I still have quite a bit of a glow going on and I just really loved how it looked. I had my hair slicked back a little bit more than this. It wasn't like down, but um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the look, the kind of update on <laughs> more medical stuff, but also a few things just when it comes to my mindset and also that quick little thing about codes. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And other than that, I will see you in my next video, which will be tomorrow because it's sent Sunday. So um, yeah, I'll see you there if you watch those, but if not, I'll probably see you Monday, but okay. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.